Hello, hello, and welcome to March, April 19th. KR, 46%. There's the chart, 46%. That's our new leader. We did get out last week on Friday, if you didn't catch that video, for 170% on Adobe. So, and that was an interesting trade. Let me go to that chart. That, that info is still there. Um, reason I bring it to your attention also, too, because I think I failed to mention something on about the Adobe exit. Uh, and that was this. I did not have a lot of confidence in this trade. Let's look at the notes. Because it was a Delta 15. That was a Delta 15 trade. And Delta 15, del low deltas usually is a lot of risk taking. But it paid off, which is a point to how robust and uh, solid is the stochastic strategy. So uh, going to the future, this is going to be running till July 1st, and July 1st we'll have another change. But July 1st is still a long way away. Let's get back on track here. So with KR, we are here. Uh, this was a Delta 76, so it was that, that looked with more potential, but it's still struggling to get along. But we did get uh, some, we, we're, getting some, we're getting some accumulation right in here. So the result is we still have a lower low right there. It's still in positive territory. And we're still hunting for our 54% return to be able to get to the 100 ROI and be able to go at last bar out low to get out. With that said, with KR, and uh, we just review also stochastic strategy. It's been a while. Uh, stochastic strategy is an uptrend. That is an up here's the stochastics, an uptrend that is confirmed by an RSI. That's an RSI right here in this second panel. And the histogram, not the value, <laughs> excuse me, not the value line, because the value line lags. So it's a histogram. Histogram turns positive or is in, po in positive by any of the green histogram. It doesn't matter if it's below or above the zero, zero line. It matters if, if it's in green. And how does, so the things to set up your histogram to get these color changes like this, you go to edit study and you have the average, which I, which I blanked out in white. So I don't, I don't, I don't have that info here. The difference, this is it. Negative down, it's red, negative going up. Negative means it's below the zero. Below the zero, going up. I have to pause you. Excuse me. My apologies. So here in the edit mode of, Ma of the MACD on Thinkorswim, you have negative going up. That means that it's below the zero line in negative territory, but it's going in the up direction. Color that green. Positive going down. That's above the zero line going down. And then the green positive going up. That's the green above the zero line. So it's just red, green, red, green. And now you're able to see how the histogram is showing a trending direction. Uh, standard, no, no change up here. I use the exponential. There is a choice of the simple and weighted and wilders. But I am on exponential. Um, I'm not completely sure which one is the best. This is the one I've been using. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, the zero line is a black line. Then the up signals, how you get these arrows. You go the up, hit the up signal, color color it blue. I like blue for the going up, going to sky, and I like I like the light, I like the light, the largest weight. Down signal, of course, is red, and in the largest is five. That is how you set up this MACD to get these nice little color indications, and then you hit OK, and away it goes. There it is, and it's on your chart. Uh, as adding it to your chart. That would be coming up here to the beaker. And in the beaker, you would just type in MACD and you get MACD histogram. Click here, double click it. So it ends up over here on this side. Move it into what position you like. Now you can see I like stochastics, RSI, MACD, and then the ATR. And then after you move it over here, then you can hit the gear right there in the MACD, hit the gear, and then make those changes that I just showed you in the prior panel. And then you hit OK, and then apply it OK, and it, there it is. And that's how you act your MACD with the nice coloring and the arrows to help you 
change with a shift of direction. So, and the arrows are indicative to the uh, zero line, not to the color of the histogram. So it's just a crossing of the zero line. But we're looking mostly watching the color. I have the arrows there just to give me an indication of, of keeping in mind what direction things are going. So that's an explanation of the MACD. In the future, we'll go in deeper explanation about how to set stochastics and set up your stochastics and set up your RSI. With that said, let's go on now to our second leader, and that is T. And T has yet to cross this third ratio. It is building up slowly. I mean, it really got nicely up here and then fell back down. But now things are opening up in the economy, and uh, possible AT&T will get their get their uh, organization and their push at Warner Brothers and hold on HBO Max and uh, get back to making some content and delivering the content. That's what AT&T bought what, what Warner Brothers Records, Warner Brothers Records, well, they probably got that too. Warner Brothers Studio was to have, con have content and then have that content delivered over their system. Essentially, it's like the old days of the motion pictures where the studios actually owned the movie chains and then dictated control of the movie chain. And uh, that was decreed in the 1950s. That was that monopoly or control was broken up because there was only a handful of studios controlling everything. And now fast forward to our new day and age. Now we have multiple production companies and then the studios are also now allowed to own their theaters again, if so wish. But now that they own streaming, why bother? So <laughs> that is the story between, between AT&T. Okay, going on to CVS. Here we have CVS uh, here running at 10%. Third ratio is way up here. So we've got, a, we've got a bit of a travel to get to that third ratio. And it's uh, running at $37. Not much to talk about. Capri, uh, Capri is still holding in, t in, in its positive territory. Uh, well, it's in the downtrend, but we still have a lot. We still have that buffer zone here. And once it can work its way through here, it can, it, it can do a reversal. It's still in good position here on the stochastic zone. Uh, that does conclude that we did have an exit today. We had a loser on Byram. And so now that we have, the, and now we, here is the unfortunate thing. And this happens, remember, on the laws, we had a major, we had two good wins in the past two weeks. So we were due for a bit of a heavier loser. And we got hit here with Byram at 48% in six days of loss of $71 on four contracts of 284 with $5 in fees. For 289 total loss on the trade, adding it to 896 on the carried for a new O of 1185, and it was a put. We were looking for this put action, and it didn't happen. You can see it reverse. Now this was stochastics weekly. This is the Elvis shift for April. The stochastics weekly. So we have now in our stochastic scanner saying, also in, consider stochastics weekly, and then we're going to be running this. So so far. Stochastic Weekly has not been doing well. And if it doesn't do well in the in this 30 days, then it is dropped and we fall back to our original good play of Stochastics with using the 10-day uh, EMA as a trend director. But with that is, we are concluding tonight's report with Losers Become Winners, April 19th, KR at 46%, and catch you tomorrow. Thank you much for stopping by.